June 15th, 2021, it was just a normal day. I called my wife and she was getting her mother's prescription, so I decided just to go ahead and work late. We just finished planting flowers and then Summer was putting the rocks on top and then she got a piece of candy from Grandma and then she asked to go back in the house with the boys. Well, she walked right in the house. After Summer went inside, I walked back over here to my mom's camper and I fixed my mom's knee brace when she was sitting right here in the doorway and I told my mom that I have to go back in with the kids. Helping my mom with the knee brace only took like two to three minutes. After I came into the house, I asked the boys where she was and they said that she went downstairs to play in the playroom. And I came into the playroom and looked. I even looked under the bunk beds and everywhere and she wasn't here at all. And when I couldn't find someone in the basement, I'd come outside and I stood up here on this hill and I hollered for her and told the boys that she wasn't down there. And then I went outside and I called Donnie right away. About 5.30 p.m., my wife Candace called and said she couldn't find Summer. I says, well, hang up for me and call 911. So I threw my tools in the car as fast as I could, got in there and started down the road and called 911 myself. I've passed all kind of cars in double yellow and everything, and I'm getting really worried. So I, here's my road. I pull down here. Here's the creek right here. I notice my three boys are together, and they're over here looking. And then I looked over that way and seen my neighbor coming this way towards my boys and my heart sunk because I knew she was abducted. I knew she was gone. But just like many parents of missing children these days, Don says they turn to social media for help. But instead of sending clues to his daughter's whereabouts, online bullies began accusing them of being guilty of either killing their daughter or having something to do with her disappearance. So Candace and Don say to prove the naysayers wrong, they sat down with body language experts Scott Rouse and Greg Hartley. Now, Scott and Greg are interrogators who have worked with the FBI, law enforcement, and the military. Scott says his approach is biological, and Greg looks for motivation. Together, they have been called a human lie detector. Now, Scott and Greg agreed to sit down with Don and Candace to dive deeper into their story. There's no such thing as body language of deception. There's only body language of increased stress, and that indicates something for us. There are no absolutes. Just because someone does this doesn't mean they're lying or telling you the truth. And in real life every day, debriefers do exactly what we do, and they find information the person doesn't remember that they saw. I thought it was a four-wheel drive, like Ford Escape or a Bronco or it something. It looked like a blue minivan to me, but I don't know. Small blue minivan? That's what it looked like to me. We knew we would get to a point where it was going to be hard emotionally. And that's hard to do because people will think you're a monster, but that's important to getting facts. Do you know what happened to Summer? No. Do you know who took Summer? No. We actually hit harder on the questions for what happened that day. When did this happen? How long was it before this happened? When you come home, when you first come home. I'm not doing all that. I'm not going all the way back. I can't do this. So you know I mean? They're, they're no. trying to help. They're trying to help. You're trying to it's help. not helping me. Okay. I know. I know. Okay. If they might. They might. There's nothing more to remember. And we did see some interesting body language. But I want to go home. <laughs> Well, guys, this is an interview that you conducted um, near their home, and a lot of interesting things turned up, and I want to look at those and discuss them. Now, Scott, what has jumped out to you most about either one of these two, e either mom or dad? What's jumped out at you most? The differences in comfort and discomfort as we speak with them. There are certain things we touch on, and when, they be, when we're talking to them and they're comfortable, they start becoming uncomfortable due to stress. Those are the things we look for, and we saw those things jump out. Yeah, and we're gonna look at some of those in a minute. Greg, how about you? Yeah, Doc, so we look for a baseline, and baseline can be everything from speech patterns to movement to all of those. Everyone here, if you ever been pulled over by a police officer, the way you talk changes, the way you move changes, that's stress. So we're looking for that when we're talking to these people. Mm -hmm. And it's different in Candace and in Don. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.